Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Hamda. Hamda, what am I seeing on social media? Apparently you bought weed for the first time in your life and you're very, very excited. Excuse me. Excuse me. I understand yeah. that you're using certain lingo because you're not of this religion completely. You're like, a, you know, what is it? A Passover Easter Jew or whatever. I have friends who smoke. <laughs> I acquired weed with Xerxes okay. uh, with uh, from from a friend and we had to give him a donation. Oh, by the way, when you say friend, does that mean strangers you just don't know yet? That's right. Okay. Here's what happened. We were at Katz's Deli, you know, Katz's Deli on Houston on the Lower East Side. If you're in Manhattan, if you're anywhere in New York. You must go to this place. It's the I'll have what she's having from that movie. Right. But the actual best pastrami, you can't get any better. OK, now across the street, we see a truck. Now we are reminded of the truck that Keith was telling the audience about a couple weeks back where mm -hmm. he bought supposedly a weed lollipop. This truck, I made fun of you a little bit for buying off that truck because it's not going to be THC. It's not going to get too high. I don't know what they're doing. It's like a whole different thing. I was and excited because it hurt my throat. I'm like, I guess that's good. But I, apparently I'm told that's just glass shavings. That it's just actually might mean cheaper you have than candy. <laughs> it's a five dollar lollipop that you can get when you go to the doctor as a little kid, which, right. by the way, stop giving kids lollipops for going to the doctor. Good. But anyway, different story. Start giving them weed. Just kidding. Across the street from cats, there was um, uh, a, a little van, like a little what looks like one of those small uh, school buses, but it wasn't yellow, okay. you know, and there were and I, I posted this up. There were flashing, you know, signs on it. It had to be it had to be plugged in. And it was like weed here, like very not inconspicu in in uh -huh. conspicuous, inspicuous. <laughs> And we had been learning that ever since they uh, they allowed for rec recreational marijuana in New York, that we are going to have shops popping up, but they're not giving people full license to sell it yet. That should be coming in a year from now. So it was interesting. But we heard some people are going around that by providing all the things that a weed store would provide, the vapes, the flour, the edibles. And they're saying that it's free. You're allowed to give weed wherever you want in New York, but they are allowed to accept donations. So now the people who are starting earlier are accepting donations. Now, I want to know what happens when I don't want to donate to the church. You know, is it sure. like Scientology? You get locked up in the top uh, floor. Uh, I'm going to guess you give your donation first, right? <laughs> they were pretty cool about it. Pretty cool about it. And it was very about strange. What? Um. Like taking your it, money, it, it didn't seem shady. No one was weird. Um, okay. they, they had this like magnifying glass that you could look at the weed if you want, you know, um, being very careful to it, it was like a real shop experience. It's not like the dealer where it's like, can you tell me what strain this is? He goes, don't worry about it. It's hot fire. It's not right. hot fire anymore. You have to actually explain yourself. You have to tell me how much of everything is in this. So uh, so we bought for the first time open the 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 sun was still out people were exchanging money and weed with hands and is we everybody were, giggling like this, this was, is illegal i was they, they everyone else was super cool i was like i i said as it's happening i'm like holy shit holy shit right <laughs> and um and he and they had edibles and the edibles was you know that um long thing of candy uh like, it's like just, a rope well, yes, a rope. That's what they called it. And the rope came in beautiful packaging like for children, which I can't wait until we don't have to eat candy in order to get high. Every night I'm going to eat candy. I'm going to have cancer and chemo. I got to eat candy. This is anyway, it's it's so much candy, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So in the packaging, it had a ruler as part of the packaging showing you if you eat from here to here, this is how many milligrams you're eating here to here. This is how many milligrams. And so you can keep track of it. We split the whole thing in half. I have not been this kind of goofy fucking high, like the kind of high where, you know, you could be embarrassed of yourself because you are, you know, you're so silly right now. Right. So you should be in a safe space. I have not gotten that, not in Amsterdam. 
I mean, I don't know, you know, Spain, we we smoked also had their edibles. That was nonsense. This was next level. And so things are changing now. Uh Later on, we're back home and we see that there's some kind of deal going on in the Lower East Side. So and I couldn't leave. So Xerxes is going out by himself. He's got to make it to the store before eight. Right. Takes his bike to the store. Now, I didn't want to call him. It was 10 minutes before eight. And I wanted to make sure to see if he got there. So I checked the app to see where he was. He was on the Lower East Side and I didn't check the address before he left. It was Surf Reality's address. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? That's funny. Yeah, I recognized it. 172 Allen Street, the place where Keith and I met, I guess, about 20 years ago now Mm -hmm. that used to. Oh, it used to be a brothel. And then um, and and then it was a bookstore and now it's uh, a weed shop. So above it is still Bikram Yoga, which is actually where Surf Reality used to be. But that's the first indoor space he bought weed in legally in New York. Turns out it's Surf Reality. That's not crazy. That's funny. It's what's it like immediately to go from the bookstore to a weed shop? Are people you must you must hate the world, right? Like, yeah. Why would you guys want a book? It's something that makes you even dumber than a book. (laughs) I wonder, though, because it it wasn't so thrilling when they were first opening. It was like a big sign of the whole gentrification and everyone's rent going up. So there was a little yuckiness when they first moved in. But then the whole neighborhood changed. So they fit in. Now the whole neighborhood's changing again. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, can you really be mad at the change when you were so part of the change. Right. I don't know. Well, congrats. Seems like a big Thank day. You. And now you have weed. <laughs> this is very exciting. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. And you just have to bike from one borough to another. I'm sure there's there's some in Queens. And I think what, what happened is we we don't know it yet. So we we got a little excited. But I think the um, the the prices are actually going to be the same and the deals are going to be the same. So we need to just kind of like chill out, do our research and then get going. OK, so two questions. How is this more convenient for you to get weed and is it more or less expensive? OK, so the convenience is we're in Manhattan and we didn't think we would spend time here so much. And, you know, it's like packing a sandwich, right? So, yes, we packed the sandwich joint. But let's say now we're spending all day in the city. We want to stay for the sunset. Boom. We can buy a joint or uh, an edible or whatever. And it's not up to the dealer when they decide to come. The dealer, when you contact the dealer, it used to be way worse. Now it's at least within a reasonable amount of time. You used to have to stay home all day like he was the cable guy. OK, right. some people couldn't get weed because They had a job, you know, so they couldn't like wait around for this person. So it is where you got where you you know when and and they're delivering as well. So you have that delivery aspect also. So the convenience is imagine you wanted a a cookie and, and the only way to do it is illegally in your house, you know, in that one space and you got to wait for the guy. Then when he gets there, he tells you what is it chocolate chip? Is it is it uh, is it oatmeal raisin? Don't worry, it's hot fire. No, you got to show me the strain. You got that your edibles actually have to work. You so is it just... more expensive or less? So I found that the edibles were less expensive and and more actual hot fire. And okay. um, the weed we get from like for like the cheapest anyone's ever heard of or that I've ever heard of. And it still was we found a deal for less. So on average, It starts at like around where we pay and around where we pay is the lowest. So it's about the same. You could find like, oh, this is the cheapest weed in the store or whatever. Okay, but you can find deals now. Now, the deals, if you're buying online because it's a cash thing. Weed is so complicated. (laughs) Weed is so booze. I got to be honest, you're in, you're out. (laughs) But now it's going to be you're in, you're out. I guess that's what I'm saying, right? Like booze. During prohibition, you had to like knock a certain time and then I don't like like buying anything. I need a magnifying glass for. (laughs) It's just me. But you're saying go by Katz's Deli. There'll be a truck of some kind. (laughs) Oh, you'll see it. (laughs) Give them donations. (laughs) They'll give you things. 
<laughs> and then eat 80 pounds of pastrami because that's how much they give you because yes. they want to charge you forty eight dollars. That's right. And you know what? Don't get that pastrami to go because then they don't give you the 80,000 pounds mm. because you're not going to see it and you're not going to be there to be like, isn't this usually more? And that's fucked up. Anyway, the person that went after us, like as we were getting on our bikes, we were hearing their next customer and he was excited, too. And this is a grown adult. And he was like, how much? I mean, you know, I want to donate. So how much of a donate? Like <laughs> all the customers are being like, of course, I will gladly give you a donation. What would you say would be a good donation for this? Meanwhile, they're like, it's 20 bucks. <laughs> Right. Are people I wonder if people are ever confused, like my dad would be in there and he'd drop his change and be like, here is your donation. You obviously yeah. get a government hourly wage. They'll be like, no, it's twenty dollars. Yeah. I said, what percent of the, that is that? Well, I just feel like for people who have been buying illegally for years slash all of their life, all of a sudden to be able to walk up to a neon sign and go, I'm getting high. Here's money. That's crazy. I wonder if it bums anybody out. They're like, I knew the band before they were playing arenas. Yeah, I went to jail before it was legal. Ooh, <laughs> such a bummer. Well, congratulations, Henda. Thank you. I, I'm not sure if you know what you're congratulating me about. You're but... happy <laughs> and I'm happy you're happy. <laughs> OK, it's calendar time. Keeping the girl week starts in a few days. Today is April 4th. You're listening to this show. Fantastic. It's working out great so far. Tomorrow is April 5th, the final day to get free Keith and the Girl Week tickets and deep discounts on the behind the scenes events. OK, for free, but for free. the last chance to get it for free. Yeah, come on. <laughs> this Saturday, April 9th, we have a private production meeting for silent trailers. Get your tickets now. We have a YouTube premiere. Subscribe for free on our YouTube page. You'll see it right there. Now, if I read to you all the events of Keith and the Girl Week, we wouldn't have time to talk about uh, anything else today. I uh, kind of found the person who had asked. I want to tell you the story. <laughs> now, seriously, become a VIP member today. These are the bullet points you need to know. Become a VIP member today and get a bunch of tickets for free. Keith and the girl dot com slash VIP. Just want to find out about tickets on its own. OK, strange, but OK. Keith and the girl dot com slash tickets. And of course, subscribe to the Keith and the Girl YouTube page for exclusive content. That's it. That's the big three. We'll see you there. All right. Happy anniversary. This person writes Corin. Hi, Keith and Hemda. Hello. I'm, I'm 41 female. I give a big shit about this email. Mm. I've been listening to your podcast since spring of 2006. Whoa. At the time, I was working in data entry and was allowed to listen to my new iPod all day. I was going through the podcast and I found Fox in the city in oh, one episode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Reagan was uh, talking about having brunch with Hemda from Keith and the girl and his glowing review made me curious about your show. <laughs> That's how we had to do word of mouth, early word of mouth. We had to go to lunch with. <laughs> I was hooked after the, the first key, episode. Keith was going to brunch. You were busy going to lunch. I went to brunch and got ourselves a listener. Yes, thank you. I was hooked after the first episode and easily made it through your back catalog. Thanks to my eight hours of available listening time at work, plus a bus ride commute. Over the years, I've gotten married, moved to Japan. Mm. I actually think I was the first fan to get their hands on. What do we do now? Thanks to the time difference between Japan and North America. Moved back to Canada, had a child, more recently lost my husband. Oh. I remember listening to all your big life moments, book deals, marriages, the tumor, breakups. And even the small ones I've grown with you. You've been there to make me laugh when I needed it. I've been uh, I've driven Keith crazy by marking <laughs> myself as a maybe on a Facebook event. <laughs> Let me fill you people. In. <laughs> you don't know what this is about because it's not petty at all. And I do it mean that. Petty. it's the opposite of petty. <laughs> These assholes that respond to you putting an event on Facebook by rating maybe out of yes, no, or maybe. Are. Have have a dark soul. <laughs> and what they're doing, whether it's I mean, this this Corin sounds like a great person, right? So it could be subconscious. But what you're doing is now making the event about you. That person would like some kind of head count. That's what the yes, and no is for. A maybe does nothing for me, but think, well, now 
you're taking up space in my head rent free. And. And, and now I'm supposed to be resp- now I, my job is to make you want to go, I suppose, <laughs> as if enough wasn't going on. You know what I think this is? I think you are comparing this to old school wedding invitations. Here's what used to happen. You know, you had one which had these mm-hmm. kinds of invitations. I didn't write. Maybe maybe I'll be there. I know. So you have your invitation that you send out. And in the invitation, it has a little card with a little envelope that's already stamped that the person whose wedding it is had to pay for it. And then you check the little thing and say, yes, I'm coming. Or no, I'm sorry, I'll still send a gift now. I'm sure some <laughs> your are, options. Yes, <laughs> right. I'm sure some people are writing that down now. Like, sure. yes, I'm coming. I'll be there. No, but of course, I'll send a <laughs> gift in a timely manner. I hear we have a year. Right. OK, either way, so, a gift's coming. God bless. Of course, the, this gift that you just gave to me, this invitation deserves <laughs> a gift back. What are you registered for? Sure. OK, that's life. Right. So then you send out that envelope. Now, they made it really easy for you. You have to check a box, yes or no, and then you put it back in the envelope. I know there's many steps. It's just like buying weed. It's okay. Follow along. Put it in the envelope. They already stamped it. So you just drop it in a post box, whatever. Now, what Keith is going is like, I sent out my wedding invitations. Mm -hmm. I did not ask anybody if they would maybe come. I need a head count. Maybe I'll keep a chicken warm in the back. Maybe. Maybe. But this is. This is not your. I wedding. might be at your wedding. I don't know yet because the kid has soccer practice and some of my wife's work. I'd rather not get into. So I just wanted to call you and know that even though you gave me plenty of time to think about it, uh, instead of working on that, I'm going to tell you, I don't know yet. I don't know yet as if anyone gives a shit. So maybe. Yeah. Since Facebook insists on giving a maybe indication, and maybe that's the whole reason everyone's you know moving off Facebook. They're sick of maybes and uncertainty in their now life. You're that. So maybe yeah. you're onto something. But if it's still going to be there, and maybe it should have a if you click the maybe button, you're forced to write why you can't make decisions. Oh, I thought you were going to say it electrocutes you, but OK, <laughs> your idea is fine, too. It's it's so self-centered to write maybe. And what if you're thinking about rude. it, then you maybe think you about it, then think about it. Now, you wrote maybe then like little placeholder for a baby. But that means like, hey, buddy, I got it. Like I, I saw it. I know you got it. Thinking- the computer works. You got it. Believe me. I can't wait until 100 years later. Someone's listening and or watching this and they're like, ah, look what these people talk about 100 years ago. People, where would you click? Everybody likes to say all the talk about things is stupid and then nothing gets solved. Everybody's above everything, but they're (laughs) slicing themselves by 6 (laughs) p.m. Everybody's so okay with maybe. And why are we talking about the slap? But at 6 p.m., when life is just monotonous and hateful, Over and over again, you're cutting off your dick to feel. So maybe we should be talking about these things. Oh, maybe that's the biggest problem. It's a big one. And we have a lot of police. Anytime a police goes, hey, honey, where are you going? Uh, Know that somebody could be tackling the maybe problem. Okay, and it's worth bringing up. Maybe. Maybe. (laughs) I've even used Keith's phenomenon song to help put a friend's son to sleep when I was babysitting to sleep. Do, 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 do. That sounds Unfortunately, scary. being a widowed mother makes it hard for me to afford VIP or to have free time to uh, listen as often or even spend time on the forums like I used to. But I'm still here. And so are you. Even oh though my we've God. Never... Wait, we have a yeah. policy that I just came up with. Yeah. Uh, widows get a year of VIP free. OK, done. Yeah. That's what even though congrats. Yeah. Even though we've never met in person, having you be such a part of my life for so long, I do consider uh, the two of you my friends. Yeah, it has to be to be clear. They didn't say widow. So you do have to be a widow. If, if like if he got lost in like a big box store. And believe me, I've done that. But if that's what you mean, that, does, you know, that can't count. Well, congratulations on your anniversary. They say I will continue to be here just as I know you will too, Corin. Thank you. Thanks, Corin. That's sweet. I'll tell I'll tell everybody something, a little discount they can get. 
I it's a browser extension called Honey, H-U-N-E-Y. H-O-N-E-Y. H-O-N-E-Y. Try them both. H-O-N-E-Y. You go to joinhoney.com slash KTG. And uh, you'll see a, a, a browser extension that whenever I buy things on a website, if there's a coupon code, it tells me that code automatically. I can't oh, believe this thing is, is free. I don't. It's it's absolutely amazing. It just comes up and goes, hey, don't pay for that that much. Here's the code. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the Internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. What I get the other day, headphones, I saved 20 bucks. It was a surprise, surprise, 20 bucks saved. I'm like, oh, OK. See, these things to me feel like a scam, except when and then I see Xerxes using it and I'm like, OK, like he's a security expert. Right. He's not going to use something that's going to tamper with his computer because I'm like, why are they giving this to us? And he's like, it's completely fine. And he uses it all the time. So I feel comfortable. Honey has found it's over 17 million members, over two billion dollars in savings with a B. If you don't already have honey, well, you're straight up missing out. Come on. It's literally literally free installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you know, you're doing Keith and the girl a solid. And we don't recommend things we don't use. So go to joinhoney.com slash KTG. That's joinhoney.com slash KTG. Now, the other day, of course, we had April Fool's. Yeah. And I got a text message from our friend Rod Morrow. And he wrote to me, hey, remember when I invited Mike to lunch with us? Next text, April Fool's. I'm like, ah, I, looking back, I knew it. Looking back at the time, <laughs> I knew it. Of course, uh, him and his wife uh, host last week on Keith and the Girl every other week. And those other weeks, Bianca Brady hosts. So today we'll be talking to Bianca Brady. We'll be going over last week's shows, including the polls, which because it's all about the, the slap heard around the world and they go together. I want to go over them right now real quick, but we'll go over them in more detail later. If you had to pick a side was one of the polls and you do. Whose side are you on? Will Smith or Chris Rock? Keith and the girl listeners said. Chris Rock, 75 percent. OK, 75 still. Yeah. Did you put a maybe in there? And that's why it's 75. Will Smith, 25 percent of people are on the Will Smith side. I don't know if you're really on Will Smith's side. You're like Ben Affleck in the movie Deep Water. Shit, I should have seen that. You shouldn't have. But oh, OK, he's a cuck. <laughs> he's a cuck that snaps and keeps cucking mm. and keeps snapping. Would other people describe the movie the same way? Just for absolutely. They absolutely. They okay. try to use different words while he's not okay. a cock, but he's a, he's he's Will Smith. OK, he's absolutely Will Smith. Uh, they they asked Richard Williams, the guy that Will Smith played, you know, the Williams sisters dad. What did you think about Will Smith's actions? Because Will Smith invoked his name. During, yeah, Will uh, Smith was speech. like, just like these do these women's father. I yeah. also personally were like, are you this person now? Like and I I didn't see the movie and I don't really know much about it. So I couldn't tell where the story was. Is it like the Jackson five story of their father? Right. Or, you know, or was it like a sweet story with like a, a pleasant ending? I don't know where this fight. And I'm like, is he comparing himself to a good person or a bad? I can't tell. Yeah, I didn't see just the hate dad someone and called it God. Right. Was the dad even at the Oscars? I just remember them showing the sisters. Oh, maybe the Academy know. forgot to invite him because they couldn't <laughs> tell the difference between the two. Right. Well, uh, they asked him Richard Williams and he said, I, I disagree with Will Smith. There's no reasons for violence at all. Okay. So it's like, damn it. I said we were the same. We are not alike. Uh, another poll we had. Should Will Smith's King Richard Oscar be taken away? Twenty six percent say yes. I. I had a hard time with this, but I wanted to vote because I wanted to make a decision. And sure. I said no. I did because too. because for me, he already won. And then the slap happened. Does that make sense? Like he still should have been kicked out. And that Oscar is his because it's it was. in the past. Yeah. yeah. And he just slapped him. So going forward, you can't get any more of these. Plus, like you can't come on the stage right now because you're not safe for the stage at the right. moment. 
agree with that. Is it inappropriate? Was another poll for white people to discuss the slap? 15 percent of people say yes, it Mm. is. It's inappropriate. Uh, 80. uh, Let's see. 80. What? Five. Eighty five percent of people say no, it's okay. I would like to know what percentage of the 15 percent were white who voted. Like right. where it's like, oh, yeah, we totally shouldn't talk about anything. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I asked but- Xerxes what he thought of that. And he was like, somebody still slapped someone. And I was like, <laughs> OK. <laughs> right. and, and also, you know, there was some stuff on the forums and it's like, you know, what about the fact that, yes, Chris Rock did make a movie about uh, black hair. black women's hair. And also um, they pointed out that there was a new law in New York that you can't be discriminated specifically because black hair is uh, is something that like your employer won't necessarily understand and will draw conclusions that are negative. So you can't be told how to do your hair. And he goes, yeah, somebody still hit somebody. Yeah. Agree. So I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, By the way, the last show we did, that's the one where uh, somebody opened my door and started uh, walking into my apartment. You were the only one that was just like, yeah, that happened. I am. I needed to stop and go. How is your heart still beat? Was it beating in the same rate? No, it was done. It was over with. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Then the person left. Sounded like they were looking for a realty office. That's the end. It, it didn't skip a beat. Somebody just opened the door to your place while you're like, I Maybe. guess you're not. at. Did... But and then it's over. It's a man's okay. world. Is that what it is? I guess I can't, so. I can't. You didn't even pause, though. I kind of did. My voice kind of trails off if you hear back. Okay. Oh, is this like when you're drowning and you're like, hey, by the way, if it's yes. not inconvenient for anybody, will you save me? Yes. OK, but that's the negative of being a dude. Also, you can't express that like that scared the shit out of you. You have to come back to neutral right away. Does Keith still think he lives in the country, says the tickler? Why the hell is his door open and why is he so calm about it? Well, first of all, I know the tickler happens to be a black gentleman, so uh, don't comment on white issues. OK, you don't know my troops. <laughs> uh, you Butchers. think he's from the country? That's a that's a funny fucking. I don't, point. Know. Maybe. I don't think that you were leaving your door unlocked in the country. Your dad probably thought people were going to come steal his Bible. It's so precious. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it leads to the church or house. <laughs> uh, Butcher says the slap happened between two multimillionaires. Non multimillionaires shouldn't be allowed to have opinions on it. I suppose that's <laughs> fair. Now, this kind of goes to me saying we got to talk about the stuff. We got to talk about the slap. We got to talk about maybes on Facebook. I think it's important. And this this thing, what's going on right now, the slap. Is so amazing to me. Uh, it's a touchstone. And I don't think I'm being overly dramatic when I say it's a touchstone the way 9-11 was a touchstone uh, in a way that I can, I, you know, this this covid is making me lose track of time. And I, what what what, you know, you'd say, hey, when did you do something last year, last two, last three? And I'm like, I don't know. You got to put me in a place or a scenario. Now I go, ah, was it before the slap? Mm-hmm. Yeah, comparing it, it to 9-11 might have jarred some people, but I think they're back now. You need a marker like some people use like, oh, when I was dating so and so or when my kid was five, like that kind right. of thing. When we were doing when we were podcasting five years in or something, when we went on tour like that, that thing that happened in the year was how you mark time. A uh, spadge writes. I don't know about you guys, but I'm glad the forums had such engagement going on. But this slap shit is starting to get old. People do love to uh, give their opinions and say that it's gotten too old. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. A lot of paragraphs for not caring. Can we talk about what really matters? Then showed a picture of. uh, Of this person's Twitter feed. And Bobby writes, the craziest thing about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock is that Joe Biden just proposed raising the Pentagon's yearly budget to thirty one trillion. And David writes, my thoughts on the Oscar slap incident are that it's 70 degrees in Antarctica and what's left of the viable, livable ecosystem is being destroyed. And so we should focus on that. 
Uh, Bobby again says, I've been thinking a lot about the Oscar slap. My takeaway is that the workers of the world are being fed into a meat grinder by a detached ruling class of oligarchs who profit from the exploitation of our bodies and minds during both life and death. <laughs> it's oh. so true. <laughs> right. All right. You fake dorks. Let's talk about what you really want to talk about. Global warming, <laughs> flood, fire and drought fueled by climate change could take a massive bite out of the U.S. federal budget per year by the end of the century. OK, you guys know about the Office of Management and Budget Assessment? Yeah, I assume so. Oh, no, we made Keith read the whole newspaper to us. It was tasked, yeah, as tasked by President Biden last May. Uh, they found the upper range of climate changes hit to the budget by the end of the century could total a 7.1 percent annual revenue loss. This is insult injury, maybe, I think. So it's good to focus on what's really important. Dolphins. I think you guys are just bad planners. I think you could look up. People, looters being taped to uh, telephone posts in uh, Ukraine and still go, hey, what's Chris Rock thinking today? I have on my calendar on the 18th, the, the Oscars and Will Smith will have a meeting. Is that is that really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely true. <laughs> yes. This is fascinating stuff. Now, why is it fascinating to you? It, it, I, uh, like you said, you, you'd sooner picture Meryl Streep pissed herself on stage than the Will Smith is punching Chris Rock or slapping, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, people seem to uh, they had a discussion. Uh, it, it's it's fascinating. Uh, they're both gods in what they do. Uh, Will Smith is up there with Oprah, quite frankly. You never would have pictured this in a million years. You couldn't even bet on it. And casinos are ready to take your money for any reason. Uh, and it's not I don't I don't I'm not a member of the Rock family or a member of the Smiths. <laughs> but it's it's not that bad, but it's so crazy. It's a huge fucking event. Like if anybody goes, OK, do you really care this much about the slap? Because it's so fucking crazy. And then it becomes interesting to me, the people that defended it. But other than that, no, it's not the end of the world. Who cares? Fuck them. But I, 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 I think I feel the same. Like it was so shocking that I had to watch it. Like, right. Yeah. And then and then I'm thinking, oh, this is such a black and white issue, you know, because it's not allegedly and backstage right. or two years ago. And we saw it all. Yeah. Pe yeah. People compare this to, let's say they compare it to Weinstein. Uh, we know one I mean, one scene's in prison, obviously, we know he's a horrible person. But this this is on video and that's there's the no thing. denying what happened, I would think. I mean, in this world today. You no, can... but that's the point. Once I saw it, I'm like, wow, there's no denying Will Smith. Something happened like he's totally wrong. And and uh, the pandemic, I thought one of my thoughts was the pandemic is truly getting to everyone. Yeah. People think that they can slide through something called a pandemic, a global yeah pandemic and just be OK. And I'm like, yes, every, they're just like us. And then they right. eat and all this stuff. So, yeah, I was like, OK, this is affecting everybody. But then when people were like, well, he shouldn't have said this and you should consider Will Smith's upbringing, people who have been throwing other people in jail for looking at them fucked up. People who have been calling people snowflakes for having a feeling about somebody else's feeling like just all mm. kinds of stuff. And it's weird to to just go, no, this is a thing that even should be discussed this much. It's not my fault. I can't believe there was this much discussion until you were saying, hey, Chris Rock had it coming. That had it coming. That attitude right. of how. I thought I wanted to look at it again. Did I see this? Is yeah. this an experiment on people's? You know what it, I mean? Like, is this, this is the, the gods must be crazy? This is the blue dress. No, it's, the blue dress is science. Well, this is this is psychoscience, right? But like, we can't look at people's brains yet. But the blue dress, they can explain in words that I never want to read because whatever, it's just fun to, <laughs> to know which which side you're on for that. But here, somebody slapped someone and now you're saying there was provocation. Right. OK, 
Uh, Will Smith provided a statement to the Academy and says, I have directly responded to the Academy's disciplinary hearing notice. And I will fully accept any and all consequences for my conduct. OK, so this is a, he's given this, this is a statement about what happened. Uh, my actions at the 94th Academy Awards presentation was shocking, painful and inexcusable. OK, so okay. D- 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 will d- would that lower the percentage if we ask the poll again? <laughs> the guy that did it knows it's inexcusable. Does he just have to say that because it's Holly weird? Well, you let's know, hear deep the down, he doesn't mean it. Let's play. <laughs> Sorry. Let's hear the rest of it and see how he does in the meter. The list of those I have heard is long and includes Chris, his family, many of my dear friends and loved ones, all those in attendance and global audiences at home. I betrayed the trust of the Academy. I deprived other nominees and winners of their opportunity to celebrate and be celebrated for their extraordinary work. I am heartbroken. Just say you're broken, by the way. I want to put the focus back on those who deserve attention for their achievements and allow the Academy to get back to the incredible work it does to support creativity uh, and artistry in, in the film. By the way, let me be clear. If I was up for best documentary and th- that slap came right before I would be announced, still would have loved it. Really? 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 Hey, really? And now you see that I won, by the way. Hey, many other movie that won other than Summer of Soul. So I'm resigning from the membership in the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Scientists Sciences and will accept any further consequences the board deems appropriate at uh, the electric chair. I mean, what do you think they're going to do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sla- we're going to slap you one at a time like that movie airplane. They're actually very upset by his decision because they were going to draw it out until people stop talking about it and they just let it slide. Yeah. Change takes time and I'm committed to doing the work to ensure that I never again allow violence to overtake reason. Well, again, don't don't tell us how you would do that. Just uh, that you'll definitely be able to do it, even though this was a total fucking surprise. Uh, So you think. Oh, sure. What does it mean, though? Uh, nothing. I think this is his way of being like, don't take away my Oscar. I'm stepping down from voting on. I think it means he can't vote for other people. And that's supposed to be so shocking. You know, that's supposed to be devastating. I think I think that's what I think. There's nothing else that he can do except revoke his own small, you know, revoke the privilege of this, whatever the fuck it is. He could melt down the Oscar and give it to Ukraine as a bullet. There's something. There's always something you can do, you know? Uh, the Grammys were last night. What is it like? Is there an award season? There literally is. Yes. Oh, it's called that. Oh. <laughs> so they all happen at the same time. Basically. Yeah, that's too busy. Why not stretch right. it out? Because they know how boring it is. They're like nothing's going to happen in now and nothing's going to happen in ours. And then we'll have get an Emmy for one of those and nothing will happen. But that's like, OK, let's say you can have, you know, that's like putting your half birthday closer to your birthday. It's your half birthday. <laughs> uh, Trevor Noah hosted the Grammys and it started by saying, we're going to be listening to some music. We're going to be doing some dancing. We're going to be doing some singing. We're going to be keeping people's names out of our mouths. And we're going oh. to be giving out awards all throughout the night. Oh, did it get a laugh? Uh, yes. Yes. OK. OK. And here's something speaking of laughs. Best uh, comedy album Grammy. Louis C.K. And it's I funny, understand. I think I have to say I'm completely serious. Louis C.K. wins Grammy. The Hollywood Reporter is reporting for first special since sexual misconduct allegations, uh, accusations, by the way, for its matter. But OK. But he won for uh, the album. Uh, let's see. What's it called? Sincerely, I believe. Sincerely, <laughs> Louis C.K. It's called. Why not? Yeah. So who is he up against? Like, oh, um, I don't know that. Rolling Stones. LL for best comedy. It'd be funny <laughs> if, he was, if he was up against um, Will Smith. Na, 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 na. Grammy best comedy. Let's take and it's a look in here. the Grammys, as I understand, because it's considered an album and we're celebrating albums, not necessarily just music in the Grammys. Correct. Correct. OK. I, I think they just wanted comedians to attend personally. And they, they do not make it easy to find this. Really? 
Yeah. See, it's not my fault why I don't know these things. So what do you think of him getting a Grammy? Here we go. It's stupid. Best comedy album. Uh, oh, this is so tiny. Chelsea Handler has one here. Oh. Louis Black. Nate Bargatze. Holy shit. Kevin Hart. And someone that I can't really see. Make Nate Bargatze, who, by the way, has been on our show a couple of times. He's as big as those other names. All right. And Holy Lavelle shit. Crawford. Lavelle Crawford. Do you know who that is? No. Mm. What are you, a Keith and the girl guest? No, I don't. Sorry. That's a lot of people, by the way. I didn't know that so many people could be nominated. Is it just like everybody with a certain amount of followers? It's everybody who came up with the album that year. You're in. So, uh, no, absolutely not. You, the, the, if there's rules to behavior, the way Weinstein isn't allowed to able to win an Academy Award again, uh, then no. Louis C.K. Then, you know, you, you didn't take it. Weinstein and, and Cosby didn't slap people at the Oscars. I think he, that's uh, why, you know, so, I, and, I think, so to me, but that, I mean, he's just he's just forgiven. Period. The guy fucking at Louis C.K. admitted what he did. People forget that. They say it's time goes by. Uh, no, I was, uh, you know, it's not a big deal after all. No, it's still a big deal or it was proven false. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. He uh, he was masturbating in front of people without their cons consent. He apologized to one person for uh, blocking the door so she couldn't leave the room when he masturbated. He apologized to the wrong person. That wasn't even the right person. He doesn't even know who he does this to. He's done it so many times and he's uh, derailed careers. When a woman would complain some years ago, he would uh, his management would, uh, you know, work to so that she doesn't get uh, any more work happened multiple times. But somehow it's all who's woke, who's not woke. Time went by. He uh, he said he did all that shit. I know. Anyway. I don't think it, it obviously doesn't matter. Duh, that's not a hot take. Right. But I wonder, let's OK, you know, Can the all these women's husbands slap Dave Chappelle because Dave <laughs> Chappelle called all those women brittle ass spirits. That's standing up for your woman. That's when. you. So if you think Will Smith is OK, slapping Chris Rock. You don't think it's OK for uh, these women's husbands to slap uh, Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle or Louis C.K. Dave Chappelle for calling people oh. that complain about Louis C.K. brittle ass spirits. Mm. And we go, ha, ha, ha. the audience is laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine this. Imagine the slap didn't happen on live TV and it didn't happen in front of people at all. It yes. happened behind the scenes and then we heard about it. By the time we heard about it, it wasn't necessarily Chris telling us or um, what's his face or Will Smith. It was just, oh, Will Smith smacked Chris Rock. At first, you're like, yeah, what were they playing? And then like he hit him too hard. No. And right. people would describe it in the way that they see Will Smith smacking Chris Rock. Right. And Will Smith would have nothing against him like that. Twenty five percent of our audience. 50% of all of America is on Will Smith's side. I think people would still be um, on uh, Chris Rock's side, but they'd be like, ah, come on, maybe you're taking Will Smith wrong. Like, is he not the kind of person? How did you say it? What was your tone? And when I compare this to sexual misconduct or uh, violence or whatever, that's what I'm talking about because that's done like a little more behind the scenes, not always. But because it's not on live TV and you can't change what happened by talking about it differently, then you can ask, like, why was she there? What was she wearing? Did he say it like that? Did he take out his dick like appropriately? But she misunderstood. Like, right. it, so those questions could arise because we don't have, you know, exhibit A like we do with Will Smith. And watch, we have exhibit A and we're still not on the person's side who actually got assaulted. So right. I don't know how how would it work out? I have news about an article my father is in Kanda. A recent one, a recent article. No, is he dead? This is in uh, popular mechanics. And it's a story about five hundred million dollars in gold. That these uh, these treasure hunters found and supposedly the FBI stole it. And my dad is tied into this story somehow. What? Now, here's here's my, a letter my dad wrote. My dad's not talking to me, of course. 
keithandthegirl.com slash dad. Uh, my dad wrote my ex-wife. Hey, whatever happened to you and Keith? Why did you break up? Which is very, very strange just to move the story along fast. And so my ex-wife gave me this letter and goes, hey, he wrote me. And I said, hey, I'm going to pretend I'm you and see where this goes. Well, it got to uh, my dad hitting on my ex, really hitting on me. And all this is at keithandthegirl.com slash dad. Well, anyway, so we don't talk because I said, that's me, you know. Come on, stop it. He goes, well, there's things you don't know about uh, your ex that we've been communicating about and I can't share. And I'm like, well, share or fuck you. He's like, no, I, I, I will not be able to help it if you don't like me simply because I was keeping one person's secrets. What are you talking about? Also, you're the, there is no other store. But you know what? You live in a world where you think you can confuse people. So why not? Why not? Donald Trump said he was never on that extra extra bus. Never mind saying grab him by the pussy. So why not go for it? Mm -hmm. Hopefully your kids are 50 percent stupid, too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Talk about uh, how life is and the way that you think it is. And maybe someone will believe you. Right. Uh, The popular mechanic story he wrote. So he doesn't he doesn't talk to me anymore, of course. But he wrote this to uh, the other kids. Uh, The popular mechanic story will be out in about two weeks, I am told. I have it right now. I read through the pre-publication issue. Now, now nobody knows what he's talking about at first. And if you're confused, they took some serious liberties with facts concerning my involvement. But I guess that their main goal was to embellish what really happened on my part. Mm. So he's just a little footnote in this story. Mm. And he goes, but they embellished my part. They just would have used what you said. Mm, interesting. This is some decades old story I'll tell you about, but OK, so he's already saying they misquoted him. Yes. By the mm. time I saw it, it was too late to make changes. The weird thing was that the whole story of what I initially did and continued to do for years with regards to dense run, it's a place far exceeded in wonder what they wrote about. So he's saying we're going to catch him in a lie in this article about some. He's saying they embellished it. But honestly, if they embellish, if they talked about the right things, it would be even more amazing. This Hmm. whole story. It sounds like they made him look like a buffoon because he said buffoon things. Spoke last night with the History Channel guy. The segment on dense run will only be about 12.5 minutes long. Wait, 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 wait. He said spoke to the History Channel guy. That's he's not usually that vague. And it sounds like there's two guys, though. It sounds like this article is one article. And then he talked to somebody about this on the History Channel. He thinks he's going to have a segment. That's what it sounds like. Mm, He usually knows to list a name unless when he's telling the truth, he actually doesn't remember people's names. It's just the history guy, because normally it's a guy I met. It was winter. 20 degrees below and like it was right. it's very. I yeah. remember him looking me dead in the eye, Mike. Mm-hmm. How did you have such a nice coat? And I said to him, I told him to make it all about uh, the the guys, the um, the treasure hunters and not about me. We had a very <laughs> lovely. Don't long- tell me how to write. My fucking don't make article. it all about me and my <laughs> great efforts. <laughs> Such an egomaniac. <laughs> please, right. Please. I said, please. It gets better. Mr. Malley, we just want like a statement. If you have it, we can hang up right now. It doesn't sound like you have anything to say. No, no, no. Don't let this be about me. <laughs> right. Can you add that? That I don't want it about me. Right. <laughs> Make sure the people know. <sighs> we had a very lovely long talk on the phone. 70 minutes. Ooh. See, you might help. That's a detail. That's, That's a detail. He might help me get my book published. Oh, Lord. So at keithagirl.com slash dad, it, you'll see a link that says book reviews. And that's his two books, uh, Breaking the True Code and The Christmas Firestar that he finally realized was shitty. And so he's combining them into one perfect book. Is he still doing that? That I think that's what he's referring to. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. He never had. Let's see. Uh, he said he never talked to anyone before like me who wasn't trying to make themselves look good. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Is that what happened? father real? I've been an interviewer. You know, picture this interview guy, history channel guy, whatever. He's like, I've been interviewing people for decades and you're the first one that didn't want to look good. Oh so 
it, what 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 he's really doing is, he, he, you know, he just he's just making shit up. But it, if there was some kind of truth to this, it would be that the guy's amazed. Like, you're really not trying to look good. <laughs> uh. You're sounding like a fucking weirdo. Hmm. He's just making it up. He lives in California, but re- was raised in my hometown of Youngstown, Ohio. I was asked whether I believed anything would come of the events of Dense Run, which I'll explain. I said it surely would be nice. Remember, this involves five hundred million dollars in Civil War gold. But how does one beat the FBI? I said. There are always a few bad apples in a bushel of apples, but I think that the good apples will protect the bad ones for the sake of the overall good of the entire basket. Why would you think that that's not even in the Bible? (laughs) That's not that's not the saying. The saying is the bad apple does ruin the good apples. And like if we learned anything about God, he'll choose the bad thing to happen. Good apples don't stick together and like the bad apples. Uh, so I'm just going to skip around this article, but you can find it under popular mechanics. It's it's a little dense, if you ask me. Treasure hunters believe they found five hundred million dollars in C- Civil War gold. There is this uh, company called in uh, called Finders Keepers. And the the owner is a guy named Denny Parada. He's 69 years old now. Dense Run is in Elk County. That's in northwestern Pennsylvania. OK, I'm skipping around, so I don't know how much I'll understand if it's a little convoluted. Uh, the, the Raider says the Raider's name, by the way, is David Howard. Once we reach our destination, and by the way, somebody did call me about this article. I don't recognize this guy's name, but somebody did call me about this and said, hey, you're about your dad. And, th- and now I'm like, am I being catfished? What? Well, mm-hmm. your dad was a psychic and he uh, told somebody where gold was and they found gold. And he goes, do you believe your dad's a psychic? I'm like, how had you had you reach me? And, and he goes uh, through Keith and the girl. I'm like, OK, do you know about my dad and catfishing? He goes, yeah, I go. OK, then, you know, my dad's full of shit. Right. That's my two cents on being a psychic. That's all I can tell you. I've never heard this story, though, in my past. Huh? So he he was asking you about your dad. What? Okay, so somebody so did ask me, the girl. I, wish I don't that- know if it's the, if it's the same person or not, but somebody did ask me about my dad saying they were a reporter and it was on this story. That's so and they still and you told them that you yeah. knew about Keith and the girl. And they still interviewed him. Well, you got it still, you know, maybe I'm just. Uh, OK, yeah, sure. Who knows? Sure. Once we reached our des- destination, the writer says Parada points to a slender cave opening that he first that he w- he felt he had to uh, start a quest. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, I just think beyond any other treasure hunter, said Parada, because. I'm not going to claim I'm smart, but I do more experiments than anybody, whatever that means. And then the 1863 U.S. government's War Department authorized the shipment of 50 pound gold bars, 26 in all from San Francisco to Philadelphia. Their their map was all fucked up. And they got lost. They had to bury this gold in a cave. OK, okay. time went by. These treasure hunters found it. And I'll explain how my dad gets into that. Then they became known in the area. And then one night FBI stole all the gold. That's that's how the story goes. I see. So there's no gold. So there's no gold. But there was there was there was a group who believed they knew where the gold was. So by the time they got to the gold, how do they know the FBI took it? They're they're even saying that they that uh, they saw the they because there was cameras set up and the FBI took all the cameras except for one. And that Mm. showed that the FBI stole all their equipment and the gold. I don't understand. You you set up a video camera. These people who found the gold set it up. Then they went home one night, tired from their laboring. <laughs> That's what it sounds like of trying to get 500. Was it 500 million dollars in gold yeah. pieces? Yeah. And then the next day, the next day, the FBI swooped in. And took the gold. Sounds like you got it again. It was a little dense. Just just for and for reference. Also, did they have to, let's say, blast a cave open? Is there mm. a hole where a, the gold should story. be? It's a, the reason why I'm I'm second guessing this is because sure. your father was interested in this story as and as and his stories always sound false and uh, like a, some conspiracy theory that right. 
he sounds smart for because there's no way you could find the evidence against it. But I would say not having a blown up area where you can actually maneuver 500 or however many gold pieces is proof that nothing happened. That is Parada was just another dreaming amateur in 1974 when his employer hired Michael Malley who performed at the time as the psychic Professor M.G. Malley. He wasn't a professor, by the way, Mm. to be clear. Professor M.G. Malley to present a, quote, delightful, entertaining ESP presentation. End quote. Parada missed the presentation Wait, during his quote, show. Whose quote is that? Is that your father describing yeah, it? Yes, yes, you yes. And then oh, pretended the somebody else wrote is. it. That's what the quote is. That's from um, news articles that he put out himself when he would do uh, shows that like, okay. uh, you know, uh, car openings, this kind of thing. Uh, Parada missed the presentation during his shift in the furniture department. He thought the notion of a psychic was ridiculous anyway. It was on his lunch break when Mally wandered by. Parada brandished a copy of Treasure Magazine with the dense run story. So one of his colleagues asked Mally whether he could help locate the gold. What I'm about to tell you next, Parada says of the encounter could, quote, change our lives forever. Who said that? Uh, Parada, the guy trying to find this gold. OK, so maybe he I guess he never uh, who, the, who the fuck knows. This is so roughly written. Mally ran a finger over the article while Parada stood behind him thinking, what a bunch of bullshit. This is Ooh. your father saying this, though, yes. right? Yeah. Oh, OK. It's not this original dude recounting how your father d- touched the paper. This is your father saying bo- this. Is it what sounds happened. like it's both of them. It sounds like it's both of them. But yeah. Mally then went into a trance and began speaking in voices. Parada believes they were soldiers who'd lost the fateful gold shipment. Mally picked up the atlas Parada had with him and with eyes looking toward the ceiling, brought a pen down on the spot where he instructed Parada to go. Later, using a soil sample Parada had collected, Mally told him to look for a cave entrance. Parada became a believer, but the search ran aground when he was unable to locate the cave. He became preoccupied with life, opening several businesses, including an antique store, blah, blah, blah. But he never forgot Dent's run, and he grew up hearing bedtime stories about all that gold. What? Um, so what then? So your father pointed out where the gold is, with, but he was too busy to find out if it's true. Let's write an article. Mally had advised them that the cave was 32 feet deep. They found they found the cave around this area, after all, and the stone wall was 15 feet. But later, Parada was able to remove enough stones to find a second chamber behind it, and that one was also 15 feet deep. So you could say it's 30 feet total. And my dad said 32. And then with erosion, blah, blah, blah. How are they getting 15 feet deep into something? I don't know. I, I dare anybody to read this article. <laughs> to this day, Denny credits, Denny Parada credits Mike Malley, the ESP and performer with enabling the discovery and has offered Malley a quarter of any funds he might receive for the gold. So, you mm-hmm. know, my dad's holding on to this, like mm-hmm. get a job, honey. What's uh, get a calculator? What's a quarter of 500 million? For his part, Mally, now 82 and living in western Pennsylvania, says the show he performed for 22 years consisted entirely of stage delusions. I certainly don't call myself a psychic, Mally says. I don't believe in psychics. Still, on very rare instances, once every couple of decades, Mally says he's able to intuit something. It's a certain feeling, he says. It's like somebody asks you, is it rainy outside? And you look outside. Yeah, it's raining. And you're that certain of it. I can't explain it. (laughs) He doesn't know. (laughs) I know I'm getting the story all over the place, but uh, the, the Mally parts are the parts that are fascinating to me. I don't believe in psychics, but I will tell you this. Every couple of decades, boom, 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 boom. I couldn't figure out I was sexting my son. Anyways, when it comes, it comes. Honestly, the article is always suspect when they're quoting him over anything serious. Like, yes, when when they're looking to him for a reference where and you're talking to me about psychic shit like that. Yeah. OK. And he says he's he did it for 20 years. Did he do it for 20 years? He <laughs> <laughs> What? I don't know. I guess you do it once 
you've, you've mm. seen stand up comedians. You do it once and then all of a sudden 20 years went by and they did it again. <laughs> Mally, who left show business night show business. Isn't it crazy that you're reading your own name? Yeah, it is. I don't like it that is. people use last names like this. Mm-hmm. Other mm-hmm. people are affected. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mally. No, I didn't. Who left show business in the 1980s to sell life insurance and annuities. That's what you do when you're successful in show business. You want to you switch to life and you know what's important. And it's making sure those alive can get VIP. It's uh, he seems genuinely at a loss to make sense of the Denton Run episode, but he says he's been able to intuit information about the site on multiple occasions with Parada, starting when Danny handed him the magazine and Atlas. What? I don't know. I don't know if I get that. Oh, the magazine. Oh, starting when he gave him. I guess he's been in touch. Maybe the most bizarre footnote the night the FBI gives a shit is that this is Mally's only friend. It was interesting (laughs) to find out that after 20 years of touring around the world, he hasn't met another single human being he's kept in touch with or remained friends with. That's interesting. Mally feels conflicted about his role in what he characterizes as a borderline unhealthy quest. He suggested to Parada multiple times that he let Dents run go. It became a there's no way my dad would have said I'm not really psychic to him over the phone, you know, hmm. it, so he's like, yeah, you should let it go. I, but why? If you know something, tell me, give me a follow up. It became an, an obsession in my mind of him going after the gold, Mally says. I mean, no matter how hard I tried to talk him out of it, he wouldn't budge. I said, quote, Dennis. <laughs> That's when you know it's made up when there's names. <laughs> Dennis, I said, this is too consuming for you. It's not going to go anywhere. And he said, I can't stop now, Mike. OK, this book right. magazine is this in. Uh, popular mechanics. Okay, it's a it's a long, again, dense article if you want to take a look. But popular mechanics and, and they did work like whoever wrote this article had to get in touch with people and yeah. put it together. Our mechanics. Is this what they're reading? about? Not many people are driving nowadays. And so they got to like look for other things, you know, like wagon. That's like a car wagon gold. All right. We're, we have a right to tell the story now. Aha. Aha. Huh. It's popular mechanics, popular mechanics Your still dad. out there. Now, what did they? So he's still upset about this article. Uh, he, no, he loves it because it makes oh. him look like a psychic. He loves it. Mm. All, all he did was say uh, I, they embellish things, but it's too late to do that. Like my dad, if he was upset, would ever say something is too late. Mm. He's like, I, so I looked up suing the popular mechanics, you know, but he's like, oh, he- uh, they embellish things. Meanwhile, the story's even more amazing. Like, OK, everything's more amazing. And yeah, you're the only person who ever came out not looking like you were trying to look good in the history of interviewing. They said, you mate, you're making it about others. And humbly, I said, <laughs> I can't believe that this is a thing. Yeah. Your father must be so excited that like, the quote press got in touch with him. Yeah, this this is what happens when you just got to keep taking out content. You would think someday they would go, hello, it's April 21st. No articles today, right? We we really had nothing new. But no, you got to find something. And uh, it's my dad psychic, but not but is. And they can't get clearer than that. In fact, I, I when I was on the phone with somebody, uh, he, he brought up the those uh, Keith and the girl dot com slash dad. And he brought up the little articles and he's, it's like sometimes he says uh, he is psychic. And then sometimes he says he's fighting to prove there's no such thing as psychic ability. And I remember answering back. Right. He's like, well, is he does he think he's psychic or not? I go, uh huh. <laughs> right. Right, right. And yeah. conclusion in conclusion. Right. My final paragraph is. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I guess so, he was on deadline. He finally made it in an article after all. Not one that he put out himself. Wow. So good job. You, that's how many that's what Mally's up has? to. 
Oh, hmm. Because he doesn't want to pay for it. Is he like, if they wanted to give it to me, they would send it to me. What he would do is buy one copy, buy a printer and a scanner, scan it and print out 600 copies. Mm. And whatever he's up to will be more expensive than if he just bought the copies. And then he'll try to sell it because it's such an important piece about this writer that's coming out with a bestseller. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it, it could be a book and a movie and the kids can have it. They can buy it from them. The idea. And they can easily keep 50 percent of the profits. Wouldn't it be funny? Shouldn't your dad continue to stay alive just so you could finish this daddy mails book mm-hmm. and put out the fucking Bible? Oh, the Bible as told by his son, Keith. Yeah. Before oh. he does, as told by senior Mally. It's all up to the man's upstairs. It's all up to the Holy Ghost and the son of God and the God, the God. The other two don't like when you say that, but, you know, the you know, the real God. Oh, well, we'll see. All right. So here's what you do, everybody. You go to Keith and the girl dot com slash VIP. You pick up your tickets now. So you're going to get them for free for Keith and the girl week. That's what you do. If you want to go a different way around it, go to Keith and the girl dot com slash tickets. Just buy them flat out. Right. Sure. What is money? And subscribe to Keith and the girl, the YouTube page for exclusive content. And that's that. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Keith and the girl dot com.